Okay, so um, I, I know I'll waffle on, so Jimmy, please chip in whenever you like and anyone if you've got any questions. Um, but my name's Saf and I've been a stage manager for uh, 14 years now um, and I'm born and raised in Warrington, um, Appleton specifically, if there's any Appleton Massive listing out. Um, but I was there until I was 18 and I left uh, Warrington to go to university and study drama um, at Hull, um, which was really brilliant, but it was a very um, non-specific degree that I did because I left going, oh, I want to do theatre, but I've no idea what I would like to do in theatre. And that degree was really brilliant for me because uh, you got to do a bit of everything. So you got to do a bit of acting, uh, which I hated and I'm no good at, um, but lots of the backstage roles, which was great but I still didn't really kind of know what a stage manager was when I when I left to go to Hull and a lecturer gave me a really brilliant piece of advice and said rather than trying to fit yourself into a box of um kind of a job role just trying to find out what you're really good at um and I worked out that I'm quite an organized individual and although I didn't want to be in the spotlight I loved the kind of live elements of theatre um so I thought stage managing might be for me so when I left university, um, a lot of my friends and peers were going on to do postgraduate um, courses, um, specifically in stage management. And I decided that that wasn't for me. One of the main reasons was financially, it was a huge amount of cost. Um, and some other people said, it's kind of another way to, another way to get into the industry is just to hit the floor running. So when I left, I did a little bit of uh, work experience, a bit of site specific work experience in Manchester for a couple of companies, but uh, I had to pay my bills as well. So um, I took on an ushering job at theatre, which was absolutely brilliant because I got to see loads of theatre for free that I wouldn't have been able to afford to do otherwise. Um, and it got me into the kind of theatre environment, especially because there's so many long hours you work in theatre. When you're an usher, you're there all the time as well. Um, I did see 100 uh, versions of a Christmas Carol at one point, um, so <laughs> that was a lot. But it got me into into an actual theatre. I took on a job um, working on the bar in the Lowry, um, which was one of the best moves I did because after I finished my shift on the bar, all of the cast and all of the backstage team would be in the bar, and I basically accosted them after every show and spoke to people that um, worked backstage, and that kind of confirmed to me that I did want to do stage management just through talking to those people and I also got a job um, working as a stage doorkeeper in a theatre which was an entry-level position I just did um, kind of admin um, photocopying scripts that kind of thing but every single person who works in a theatre if they've got a stage door they will pass you and um, so I accosted their stage management and said this is what I want to do but I don't know how to go about it and they were super generous with their advice and would give me um, bits of propping to do when they weren't, um, when they were too busy in between like photocopying scripts, I could do that for them. And I met a stage manager at that theatre who was leaving to go to the Dukes in Lancaster. Um, and he said, I'm going to be interviewing for an assistant stage manager. You should apply. And I did. And I got that job. And that was my first uh, kind of big paid role. So I moved up to Lancaster and the Dukes produce a lot of um, outdoor theatre. They do some of the biggest promenade shows in Europe. And I started as um, an assistant stage manager there and I worked up to deputy stage manager. Um, the DSM is kind of predominantly uh, in rehearsals. So they work alongside actors and directors. Um, and then in the evenings, they um, we call it calling shows, which is basically queuing a show. So every time a a light or a sound change happens I was responsible for making sure that happened on time and that's predominantly what um, I've done with my career. I have stepped up to company stage manager uh, more recently and um, that's kind of the the linear pathway is ASM, DSM, company, CSM um, but the majority of my career has been with DSMing and I've been really lucky I've been on lots of tours um, and worked with lots of other companies uh, more recently I've worked with Manchester International Festival. I'm doing some outdoor work with Walk the Plank next weekend. I seem to be uh, like the go-to outdoor stage manager for the Northwest at the moment. Um, being the go-to, being the go-to anything is always good. I think. Do, I think it's just because I don't moan about the rain because I live in Manchester. <laughs> I'm sure it's because of that. 
Do you, do you know, just, just because actually I think that um, you, uh, thank you for really clearly saying what ASM, DSM and that, that um, uh, linear steps really good. Do you know in the DSM, you, you know, can you just touch on a couple of the things that you will do? Because I think it's DSM, uh, working as an actor as well, and as a director, that DSM role in the, um, like what, could you just touch on like, some of the like daily things that you would do? Because I think yeah. it's just a big thing at DSM. Um, that- yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, typically before a show goes into rehearsals, the DSM um, is responsible for like prepping things. So I make sure that I've spoken to the director before the first day in the rehearsal room is set up how they want to alongside. I'd work with the company manager and the assistant stage manager and we'd uh, set up a rehearsal room, make sure they've got rehearsal props um, and that there's a mark out on the floor. So we would literally mark out in tape um, to scale what the set will be like so the actors can um, know there's a door here or a window there or this is a path that they have to walk on and then once rehearsals start I would sit next to a director and you're kind of like their wingman for the time so and you're responsible for liaising between the director and the technical department and the rest of the creatives so the uh, lighting designer or the musical director and I would produce a set of rehearsal notes every day. And they would say, um, so the director might say to me, um, in this particular scene, we would like a spotlight to be on the actor. And I would write that down and put it on the rehearsal notes and send them out to everyone. And then the lighting designer would pick that up and make a note for, for their in kind of simple terms. It's just so um, you're kind of the main point of communication between the rehearsal room and everyone who can't be in rehearsals all the time. And you're also responsible um, liaising with actors about um, things they do on stage so an actor um, might do a whole scene so I'd write down exactly where that actor goes um, or doesn't go or what they pick up and the next time we do that scene that actor might come to me and say oh Seth which door did I come in which exit do I use how many glasses am I carrying on this tray and that's what I would write in what um, DSM is called the book um, and you have it all laid out and if that changes you just rub it out and start it again so you're responsible for keeping that book up to date so everyone knows what they're doing uh, a really big part of it I've always thought is if you go off um which touch wood has never happened to me but if you were to go off sick the book should be completely legible for anyone else to come into um so there's no kind of blip in the rehearsals or if I was off for a day like the company manager would come in and should be able to read that book as if um, she's written it, he or she has written it themselves. And then when the show goes into performance, um, you're responsible for the queuing of it, which is amazing. So at the start of um, the evening, like half seven, usually front of house um, managers would ring you. They've got all the audience in and sat down and they kind of say the house is yours. And I would take over from that point and it's my job to tell the assistant stage manager backstage to get the actors into position. Um, the lighting and sound and on uh, some bigger shows like fly operators if they're flying any scenery in I would get them ready to to start the show and then um, you one a director I worked with once um, always says it's steering the ship um, so you're kind of steering the ship through the seas and you read your cues from uh, the book you've been working on in rehearsals but there's quite a lot of um, fluctuating things sometimes uh, people don't always remember their lines that line could be a cue for you to do so you have to be quick on your feet about thinking oh gosh should I do that cue is it going to affect it should we skip it um sometimes people for whatever reason don't arrive on stage when they should have <laughs> on stage uh, I've had that happen before and then they appear in another scene because they've got a bit lost or confused <clears> particularly <throat> when you're touring um and you're in venues which have different entrances and exits I've had many a show I'm like oh you're not supposed to be on here um so it's Brilliant. it's interesting but you have to think on your feet about how best to continue the show um you're also responsible um a lot of the time for making the call about a show stop which is kind of a DSM's um worst nightmare but if something goes horribly wrong in a show for example um, a major bit of set is broken or someone's badly injured or the sound goes and you, you're in a musical and no no sound will play from the speaker um, I would then communicate with the backstage team and front of house to say we're stopping the show and uh, most of the time you can continue but sometimes you can't and they're the kind of main responsibilities for that's you. amazing that's comprehensive and it yeah that's brilliant thank you so much okay. um 
Where was I? I've forgotten now. So well, that's, that's what happens when you get hijacked. And I oh, no, it's fine. Oh. Um, so, yes, um, that's what I did after university. Um, mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to get um, quite a long contract with a theatre in the Northwest, which I uh, have recently left to continue freelancing. Um, so I'm, I'm back freelancing now. I'm currently working um, for a TV props department, which I've discovered is very, very similar to theatre stage management in terms of the skills I've needed. So I am responsible for dressing TV sets as I have done theatre sets. Um, the hours are very similar, they're very kind of uh, long, but um, when that finishes, I'll be going back out on tour with theatre, which is really exciting. Um, so that's kind of what I've been up to. Outside of that, I've been um, a member of the Equity Stage Management Committee. So Equity, um, it used to be called the Actors' Union, but now it's called, I'm not actually sure what they, they've changed it to, but it's basically the union that represents stage managers and actors in theatre. So I joined the Stage Management Committee in 2019. It's an elected position, so I'm just about um, to finish my first term on that. And we're responsible for kind of um, being an extra point of contact for stage management in the industry and anything that kind of uh, bothers stage management or problems or queries they might have they can come to us rather than go to officially the union because we're an unpaid position um, and that's been really great because I've got to meet lots of stage managers who um, have had a lot of problems because I started just before Covid so obviously a lot of people have um, had issues with contracts and being out of work and we did a, a CV workshop at the start of COVID because there were a lot of people going well what do I do in this kind of interim I've got to pay my bills and there's no theatre and um, so we did a lot of kind of CV workshops about um, reusing your skills to to do something else in this time which has been really brilliant. Um, I've also been a, a trustee for a local library which is an art centre um, which I found really positive because I never thought that anyone like me could be a trustee especially for kind of an art centre they were looking for a really diverse set of trustees and I joined them and I've kind of been working with them on an advisory role, um, role. but it's been quite quiet over Covid obviously but as we're starting up again we're looking to programme um, some more things in which has been really brilliant. Um, I've been asked about um, what career advice I would give my 16 year old self um, and I would say, um, if I could look back at me now, I would, I would say know your worth. It's quite hard in the industry because um, some jobs aren't particularly well paid and particularly when you're freelance, you just feel a need to take every single job and particularly if you, you're offered a, a day's work here and a day's work there, even if it's low pay, you go, well, I'll take it all, I'll take it all. But I would actually um, say sometimes you are able to ask for more money and sometimes theatres can't give it often they can and you should really know your worth and once you've got a bit of experience under your belt I would always um, negotiate your price. Uh, my other bit of advice would be get an accountant. Um, I got an accountant far too late to realise all the brilliant things they can do for you and how much money you can save and they can really kind of advise you on steps to making your career that will financially help. There's a lot of savings to be made. Um, also been asked about people that helped me in my career and um I, give me i think you know elizabeth newman don't you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um elizabeth newman um is an amazing director who is now at pit lockery festival theater in scotland but i've probably done the majority of the shows i've worked on with her and she's got such a drive and passion for theater for the community and her big thing is about getting people into theaters both backstage and in the audience who wouldn't traditionally be there all the time I did um it wasn't a show but it was an event where um she basically filled the theatre with sand and opened it on a bank holiday for a pleasure beach and she said well people who aren't at the theatre on their bank holiday weekends will probably be in Blackpool um, and that's kind of what I did with my bank holidays when I was a kid um, and they came into our theatre and it was the most diverse set of people that I have seen in, a, in that theatre in, in such a long time. And they kind of said, oh, well, we didn't know it was for us. And she was a real driving force to say, it absolutely is for you. And it, when I say diverse as well, I don't just mean people's heritage. I mean, their class as well. Like it's very much seen as an elitist um, 
occupation and something to go to and she was very much a driving force for saying that is not the case and she wanted everybody in um so she did that which um and now she's doing it up in Scotland they're really lucky to have her there um but she was absolutely a brilliant brilliant person I mean I met her a couple of times and she booked us for a show there she's a whirlwind isn't she like just great yeah I really enjoyed it yeah yeah she's fantastic and um she gave me a, a really brilliant bit of advice which I wish I'd known sooner but she said to me um never be afraid at any stage of your career to ask for a mentor um and I'd give that advice out now like there's there's definitely more experienced stage managers than me out there and I would I'd love to ask them for advice if I can get hold of them if you ever see um a show and you love it and you'd love to work for that company get hold of that program and find out who they are and write to them because particularly now when we can zoom like I remember when I was um 17 I was taken on a school trip to London and we saw the woman in black and I wrote um to an actor on that show and just said I love that show um, and how did you get in to what you're doing I didn't kind of know about drama schools and stuff so I wasn't really sure of his route and three months later I received a postcard from him which seems super super retro now um but it really meant a lot to me and I kind of thought oh well people are willing to to give out advice whereas now if I received anything from a, uh, like a willing stage manager saying how do I do this I'd be like give me your email I'll zoom you so it's much more easy to do so that was a brilliant bit of advice from her amazing I, I think, you know, you said about mentors. I, I definitely think, you know, it's one of those mentors. Are I've got to where I am on a, on a much quicker trajectory because of mentors. And I think you're right. You said that before, that in theatre, ask. Yeah. Right? So not, I think if you're not from a certain, if you're from a certain background, you you know, you don't want to make them either or you don't want to, you know, to ask is to upset someone else. Whereas yeah. actually that needs this demystified, like ask. You know, and even, even I'm always mad with too much. I have too many things in the fire, but I'm like, I tell people, nag me, it's fine, I'll come back. And you, you're not pestering people. And actually, most people will tell you if you're pestering them or just like, absolutely. And back. I've written to people sometimes who haven't had time to speak to me, but they've passed me on to someone that can. So it's always worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And on the back of that, especially with the way that the last however many months that we've been dealing with this, you know. I've found that as a early career artist, so many people are more willing to have those conversations as well, because there's been that passion to keep the conversation about theatre alive. And I think it's really important, like you say, that you do find that mentorship and negotiate your way through. It's It has definitely been a more accessible platform, especially like you say, using Zoom and email, that more than ever people want to make sure that this is continued. So definitely important to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that like, I've given out bits of advice and I hope it's good but I'm um, during the pandemic because unfortunately like a lot of people have left the industry which is so sad because it's been so unsustainable for for people to live and everyone just wants everybody to like be back working and to stay stay in work and when theatre kind of start to pick up again around um, like May before, like we've been in various lockdowns and stuff. When I heard of people getting jobs, even things that I'd applied for and not got, I was so over the moon for people to actually just be in work. It wasn't like, oh, she's got that job that I wanted. I was just like, great, you're in work. Like, tell me how it is. So it, I think if anything, you're right. Like it's just become so much more of a supportive network for us all. Mm -hmm. I think um, as well, I was going to say that um, I don't think that people should be shy of offering up um, the opportunity to mentor people as well. Like I didn't really, because I did some um, interviews with my old university at the start of the pandemic last year, which was kind of the first time I thought about doing it. Like people, particularly graduates, are really keen for advice. So if you can give anything, like it'll absolutely be useful. I think there's, there's, yeah, I think there's what I'd like to work towards. I don't know how to do this. So what I'm realizing is actually, this is why we're putting a trustee board and actually having meetings where it's hive mind rather than me sat with a coffee going, how do we do this? But is having that level of buddy system. Like, I think that's a really big thing. And I, buddy system sounds a bit, you know, uh, can sound a bit funny, but actually I think it's, it's just that next, how do I level up? Do you know what I mean? How do I level up? And I think that's, because that, and it is by, just knowing someone, but like you say about saying, you know, you can buddy system, but what I, I really like to do is find a 
piece of machine or a system that is like machinery so it carries on so it doesn't just stop and I, and, and if we we're building towards a, a three or five year plan where you know almost as like an internship so there's like the weekend events like a brit pop and then the, there's something bigger like a, 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 a spring tour around the north and then there's something in a building or, um, in the autumn, but over three years, you could, you know, if you started on at one show and you can build that up, but also if you're doing that, you know, there's people within the family of Not Too Tame on and off stage who you can go, oh, you worked on that. And also there's a, you know, there's not, not in a, not in a cliquey way, but like Cheap Agile loved that, you know, they were the beginning of my career, but people go, oh, they were a Cheap Agile. And it's sort of because you've gone through that family at some point you're still you still remain in it and I think yeah. there's something in that and if you if you get more and more people from certain backgrounds or working class backgrounds like Stephen Stephen Graham does with Jodie Coomer there's a kind of you know they said oh he was from my neck of the woods look like me sound like me so you felt like you could approach him a lot more and yeah. that's a big thing but oh, yeah 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 absolutely like that is the thing isn't it like I think when I mm. particularly when I went off to Hull to do theatre on my course I think there was one other person with a similar background to me but that was it and I can't even like now in the industry like diversity is pretty lacking but if you work with people who you know they look like either from similar backgrounds from you you've got that kind of common thing you know you've, you've got something in common like that I think it will really help because it's you know the, we're trying as an industry and lots of companies and individuals are trying but we're not going to get there until we have that kind of broader spectrum of, of people yeah. in there and that, that will really help. Where about in Warrington are you from, Saf? Uh, Appleton and Stockton. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I think he was from Appleton as well, wasn't he? Um, uh, um, Curry. You know, uh, from... Uh, come on, Jimmy. From Curry. the Rocky Horror Show. What? He's from Bracknell. Yeah, Tim, Tim is the word I was looking for. Tim Curry. He was Appleton. Oh, no. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm, anyone who's from Warrington, I'm trying to remember where they're actually from because there's loads of, like Sue Johnson, apparently from Warrington. She was, you know, lived in Sydney as well for years. Pete Postlewaite was Padgate, wasn't he? Yeah. And then there was, there's another woman, I always forget her name. She's in everything at the moment. She was in um, Line of Duty as well. And she was in Edgington and, it, but the, but you don't know because people like most people do with Warrington, even bands they go oh near Manchester. Yeah. So it's but those towns like Prescott and Raynell and Saint Helens and Witness. I'm like people should be really proud of where they're from and name that. I think absolutely. Uh, I, and like people always kind of like they sack off Warrington a bit, don't they? Because yeah. I did my work experience at um, the Pyramid when I was 16. I basically licked envelopes for a week and like didn't learn anymore. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> You know, people kind of like, oh, well, they've not got a major theatre, so, like, there can't be creatives living there, when actually there's a whole family of creatives from Warrington. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. That's why I was saying, and it's, and it's linking that up, and it's sort of going, look, there's loads of these people from there, because otherwise, how do how do kids know? I didn't know. If it, you know, if it wasn't for one teacher who's a gatekeeper, I, I wouldn't have known. No, absolutely not. And, I, like, I went to um, Appleton College for my A-levels, which at the time, I don't know if it still is, but at the time was, um, it was an arts college. Mm. Um, and they like, they, I had a really, a brilliant time with them, but I didn't know the possibilities, particularly within Warrington. Like it'd be really lovely if we, we have more of that connection really, because, you know, it's kind of seen that, oh, you, you know, you finish doing school, whatever. And then like your pathways are quite limited. You either, you go off to uni or like you go into a trade, like that yeah. seemed to be the only options for me. And I was like, oh, well, uh, I don't want to do a trade and when I went to uni like I was quite fortunate that the student loans hadn't changed into the separate plan um but I was like this is my only option like I do or like my mum was pestering me to be a doctor she was like you become a doctor which I ignored in the drama <laughs> but, um or you go into a trade like that seemed to be the only option whereas for me now like I interview quite a lot of people for assistant stage managers mm. and I don't actually look for it like I expect education to be at the bottom of the CV because I'm much I value much higher the skills that they've got and yeah. their attitudes. If someone comes in to me with the best degree in the world, great. But if they've not got a good attitude, then I'm not really bothered. So I yeah. think like more emphasis needs to be put on that because brilliant if you can go away for the university experience, but it's not always essential to get a job in theatre. Absolutely. 
yeah I think that's really that talking about skills as well Saf what would you suggest like would be a big or I don't know three to five top skills in order to go into being a, a stage manager because I would say like from what you talked about communication is a huge one um what else would you suggest that people would need to you know work on um, in order to go down that route I would say um punctual people like to be a stage manager you've got to be on time all the time um you cannot be late for things that's a massive thing uh, communication skills brilliant so if I've seen that someone has done another job which was like communication heavy like that's a bonus like I gave someone a job a couple of years ago who had done a lot of um tele sales but her manner was immaculate so I was like you'll be fine dealing with anything um, I'd say really empathetic people because sometimes you have to deal with quite sensitive situations particularly I found when I've been on tour or working away from home like your your theatre for the people you're working with in theatre become your family for that time and you know they come into work having not seen their family or friends for a couple of weeks having not been able to get home on a weekend like you stage managers are often um the people that will be confided in and you've absolutely got to be empathetic like everyone's often in the same boat but you've got you can't just be like oh well tough we're on tour like you've got to be really understanding and get people to trust in you because you have a you know you have a high level of responsibility on a show you do I've done shows where people have had um fake hangings and if that person doesn't trust you then they're not gonna let that fake news go around their neck like it works both ways um I'd also say um, it, it is um, not perhaps a quality, but something I always look for is someone that can drive. If you're looking to be a stage manager, you must learn to drive. Um, and I think some people fall into the trap of they want to work in London and therefore wouldn't need to drive. Whereas my first job in London, I was handed the keys to a transit van and off I went um, and got many, many speeding tick um, <laughs> that day because I didn't know how to work the system or that you couldn't turn right half the time. Um, but driving is an absolute must um, for being stage manager. And I'd also say that um, it, I know that you did a pathways a couple of weeks ago with the technical stage manager. Um, so my job isn't technical in that sense. Like I can barely use my iPhone half the time. Um, <laughs> but I would say someone who is willing to kind of keep up with um technology which people who are probably at the beginning of their career absolutely can do better than i can at the moment but things change quite quickly um so if you're willing to learn how to change a microphone or willing to uh, use q lab which is um for anyone who doesn't know it's the system we use in rehearsals often to run cues off so sometimes i am responsible for playing the sound cues in a rehearsals uh, which i've had to learn kind of on my feet as long as you've kind of got that openness to to learn a new skill um that's like the best thing i wouldn't apart from driving i wouldn't ask anyone to come into um an assistant stage manager entry level job have mm -hmm. knowing how to do things but they i would ask them to have the openness to try amazing i've listed them i, I hope it's okay i've listed some yeah. sort of, some of the things you've said which i'll put out as little uh tip bit you know tips tips and tricks because yeah, they're great they're really good um and that has flew by because it's eight o'clock and we that's half an hour um I've waffled on for half an hour i'm so sorry not at all not at all i, I mean before we just i've just got to uh, go got to be off by five past but have either of you got any more questions Sarah, like no, it was really good. Right. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say thank you, thank you very much, and I'm gonna stop the recording. Then we can just chat. That's brilliant.